So, hey guys, thanks for watching. Today we're gonna be looking at version 1.0 of the connector. It's been quite a journey and I've learned tons from you guys and I perhaps even the other way around, who knows. 1.0 doesn't mean that we're done. It just means that all the basic functionalities are in there. We can send commands, receive commands, um, send values, receive values, etc. So those functionalities are in and now we're gonna streamline it, add cool features in the future. If you've got any amazing ideas, don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down here, I believe, and perhaps the bell icon if you want to be the first to know when a new update comes out. Now let's take a look at the connector itself and how we can utilize these changes to its fullest. Here we've got our settings menu. Um, we've got a little tiny minor change in here that if we open the menu, we can now select the community folder. I believe it's a double L, right? Select, select, select. Doesn't matter, it's a typo probably. Um, but at first you have to type in the community folder path, which was, well, I don't know whoever came up with doing that. That's me. Um, but from here on, you can select the community folder. I know that I've got mine somewhere here. Community, select folder. And now it's saved. So uh, not completely true. I need to hit save. And now my community folder is saved. Now, why is that useful? It's if I hit install Wasm, it installs the Wasm module inside the community folder. And as long as it can find a community folder, it will put it there. If it doesn't find anything, it will give another pop up with a folder selection saying, I couldn't find the folder. Do you want to set a new one? And you can say yes or no if you don't want to. Now, why is this connect different from all the others out there that have been going for years and years on end? Well, quite simple. This entire drawer is filled with microcontrollers from Arduinos to ESP32s to STM32s, Teensies, and they all work. It doesn't matter what board you're using, you can use the connector to send data towards your microcontroller and from there on handle logic yourself. So you're not locked into a specific board. If you've got a little bit of imagination, you can use anything you'd like. Edit events. Um, but we get a quite an extensive overview of all the custom events that are placed in the events file. Now, how are you able to find the events file? In the folder of the connector, there is a folder called bits and droids module. This is the WASM module. In the past, if you wanted to change something, you had to learn how this format worked. It was quite cumbersome. So what has changed is we've now got a nice little editor. All these commands can be found here. And what it basically is, is a prefix. First one, 7001, which tells the game, if I receive 7001, I know that it's gonna be the fuel total quantity in gallons. So this is the command. We have a type. Do we want this to be an output? Do we want to receive data? Do we want to send data? What data, if we want to receive data, what is it? Is it going to be a float? So 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, whatever. Or do we want it to be an integer? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or do we want it to be a Boolean true or false, which are going to be coming in as a one and zero, which basically a boolean is, but that's on the topic for another day. Update every will detect how often you receive data. So if you are taking off, your altitude will change by whatever altitude you're at, and it will change a lot if you don't get this. So by default, I believe it will even do, if you do a centimeter change, you will receive that data as a change, your computer can handle this quite fine because you know the, again, the plane is flying itself and it's changing altitude as well. It, 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 the data is there. But sending that to your Arduino might be a bit too much and overstress it. Not overstress it as in damage anything, um, but data corruption, other data gets pushed out because it keeps on receiving that um, altitude data. So what we can do is say, I want to update every 10. Now, update every 10 just tells us every 10 feet, we receive an update from the game telling us how high we are. So then we only receive 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now, if you start at 11, this also means you get 
21, 20, 31, 30, whoa, that was harder than expected. 41, 51, etc. So keep that in mind um, and play around with it to your liking. Now, if we create custom outputs, we need to have a way to recognize it if we select the outputs in a set. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, so put a descriptive name here, like um, fuel quantities. This is mainly for your own sake. Don't leave it empty because you can't recognize which is which, and we can remove it. Now, I do need this one, but I believe there's one, at least one, this one, pound used. Oh no, I do use it as well. Oh, this one. This one didn't work. Prop RPM1 because it's not in the game. So we delete this one. We're going to change something. I'm going to make this 9,333. So we've made one change and we're going to delete one line. Now we hit save. Now we can actually see two changes have been found. Do you want to save these changes? And if you're not quite sure, like, oh, <laughs> I, I've only meant to do one change, then we just go to show details and it will say delete 709 which is correct we changed the prefix 9888 towards the new value 9333 and it's up to you to either cancel or save the changes now my is also an important milestone for myself quite simple i can now create any project that i'd like and create a video around it without having to think like oh i have to add this variable myself later on in the connector push a new update etc i could just edit the event file select the event that i'd like a new plane comes out i can immediately create hardware for it create awesome videos and share how to do it with you guys i would say outputs if i want to send the commands to the game I could just send the command and the connector will look up in its own library like, oh, this command is received, do this. Works wonders. But if I want to receive data, I have to make sure that I tell it where to send it. Because if I have three Arduinos connected, I don't want all of them to receive the same data. I just want one of them to receive altitude, one of them to receive the fuel, and one of them to receive the parking brake, master caution, master warning, etc. To make sure that, you know, we don't send unnecessary data to the wrong place so how we're going to do this we can create a set an output set that contains all the outputs that a certain board is going to receive so we say add set and we get this nice little pop-up nowadays for some reason it always thinks it will autofill my name i don't know why we can give this a nice descriptive name so let's say custom events so we know that this set will contain some custom events that we want to send to certain board we can switch which board it is it's just that it's it's a little group of events here we go and we can hit edit and we get these checkboxes it will tell you all the default outputs are in there we have a new tab that's called custom these fuel quantity fuel used fuel flow etc are the names of these checkboxes so let's go crazy i want to receive prop rpm2 Fuel flow, fuel flow, fuel used, fuel quantity, and we said save edit. Now if you take a look, hit edit again, we see all the outputs that are in there. We can uncheck them if you wouldn't want them. Hit save edit again and it's gone. Um, but we don't want to do that. We want to close it, close it. Okay, so the game rebooted up and I'm gonna enable the development mode. And why do we enable developer mode? Because then we're able to see what kind of variables are working behind the scenes. And there are other ways. Usually the documentation of the airplane has quite an extensive list, like the A320 of fly-by-wire. I believe this plane isn't as documented as the others. So now you can clearly see how I retrieve my variables. I go to Windows and there is a behavior section. Here we go. And you can look it up in here, I believe. Usually there is this interior. 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 Doesn't matter. And you can look through here and sometimes you'll find some... You can find some commands in here. But usually, especially with third-party planes, there is this section called local variables. And you'll find a boat ton of variables in here, even of the planes you don't have loaded up. ELT. ELT states, look at this. So if you take a look at the ELT, uh, I forgot to turn the sound on, my apologies. We can turn it on, then it will become a two. The XML for ELT state, 
if we turn it off, it will be in an intermittent state of 3, and then it turns back to off, which is 1. Now, how could we retrieve this state? Edit events. I'm gonna add an event. Just call it the bottom. And I'm gonna call this 9201. And I can sort this by prefix, right? Oh. And what do we wanna do? It's a local variable, so L double dots XML var underscore core ELT underscore state. Here we go. And it's gonna be an output. Close it, open it. It is an output and we got three states that are full numbers, so one, two, three. So it's gonna be an integer. And this was ELT state. ELT state. Here we go. Save. In a second, but it doesn't matter. Outputs, integer. And now we say ELT state. And this should. Two changes. One is gonna be returning to an input. With value. And this should do the trick. Save. Here we go. So now, if we go to our events file, we've got... Here we are. XML for ELT state. Now, if I install the WASM module, it will upload the events file as well. Bits and droids modules slash modules, so that's working. I need to connect something first. So I'm going to connect something. I'm going to take the camera off there, and so you can actually see what is happening on the Arduino uh, ESP32. Sorry, and you're able to see uh, what happens next. Okay, I'm not quite sure what happened, but for some reason my screen is flickering blue, but that's not the main issue. We still have a functioning screen, so I'm going to be using that one um, just because. For those of you that want to know what are uh, what am I working on, it's I'm working on this little thing. Here we go. Oh, I hate that new camera thing. Oh, which displays the fuel, the endurance you still have left, the gallons used, RPM, fuel flow, whatever, whatever you need is on here, so I'm making a replica of that. Um, and that's the beauty of this latest version, you're able to do so as you please. But that's beside the point, we wanted to display the ELT state, didn't we? Yes, we do. Um, so what are we gonna do? But I'm making a little change to the library. Now, Visual Studio Code is free to use, um, and it can open up the library just as fine. Um, Visual Studio can also be used, uh, whatever IDE you want to use. I usually use CLion. Okay, so I'm using the ESP32, so we need to use the ESP32 specific library, which is also available on the website. And we go to the .h file, so bits and roids flight32.h, which can all just be accessed by opening the zip file. Okay, what we need to do is create a variable right here that says ELT state, and you can name this whatever you'd like. Don't get me wrong, if you want to call this uh, McDonald's, feel free to. I'm not sponsored. And here, I already had it in there just to demonstrate, but uh, up. We say int get ELT state. So we say if we call a function get ELT state, return ELT state. And that's it. There we go, we save this file, we go to the CPP, C++ file, and there is a switch statement. And here we type case, 9201, and now why do I say 9201? That is because we defined the prefix to be 9201. So we say ELT state is cut value dot to int, and a break. And that's it. Now we can use it in all our Arduino codes every time. So now we open a sketch. I'm gonna open the one that is already on here with the screen so we don't have to fiddle around with the codes. But as we can see, I couldn't retrieve the ELT state at first. I've added the event to the event file. From there on out, I added it to the library and then I could use it in my code. It did require a restart of the game though. And I'm smoothing out this process in a future version as well. So even though this is version 1.0, I want to emphasize this is not it. It's still going to be improved on, the quality of life is going to improve, the user interaction is going to improve, and 
all in all, I just want to make sure that this becomes a really polished product, I wanted to say, but it's not a product. I want everybody to be able to use it. The code is open GitHub. Um, it's open source and it's available for everyone. Now, adding this variable still took quite some steps. So my main goal is to make sure that you only have to add in an event file. You can generate a library, um, upload it to your Arduino and be done with it. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to pick another plane. Um, DC6, tons of buttons. Uh, I believe I've got the latest version, I'm not quite sure. Here we go. If you ever see me parked here, you know I'm doing something either with a video or that I'm testing out certain hardware. So the DC6. Um, behaviors, local variable. Perhaps you can even search for DC6. Wow. Um, usually they've got quite descriptive names. I hope this is a joke, right? What am I looking at? Local variables. Oh. Look at this, um, apparently, but I can't, ah, uh, no, why? Why would you do this? Oh, look at this. Okay, so we found one of these buggers. Here we go, DC 828 object. Oh my God. Now, if we turn this on, this turns into one. So now we know that if we want to retrieve this variable or if we want to set this variable, we need to call dc6 underscore 828 underscore object I, I i really i can't wrap my head around why you would why not call this dc6 underscore c cb circuit breaker i don't know rh lh aft r f -W -D. they probably have a proper reason um, do they do they because <laughs> if i look at the, let's take another plane uh, like the Just Fly, it uses quite a lot of default functions like the throttle, uh, mixture, propeller, gauges as well, the RPM, fuel. They all use the native functionality of the SDK. But there are some things that the SDK usually doesn't have, like the visor. Okay, but before we look at the Just Fly, can I take a moment to say. Operating the gust locks is as easy as just calling these commands. And perhaps he's right, it's easy to implement it, but why do they call it easy to even find that the gust lock is number 398? So please tell me that there is a list somewhere. No, 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 no. Okay, so here we got a simpler plane. Behaviors. Just flight, visor position. Look. You can even do it up to a decimal value. Apparently, like it's now at 18.738, and fully open is come, fully open is going to be 100. So it's a range of 0 to 100. If you've got a potential motor hooked up to a visor in your room, if you wanted to, you could reenact this uh, behavior. You could read out the value it's currently at, and then with a the stepper motor, put your visor in that position. Why you would want to do that, I don't know, but please. If any third party developer is watching, just flight underscore Pfizer underscore position one. I know. And if I would get my wife, she's currently at work, but if I would get her in front of this computer and I would say, what would this variable do? She would probably, you know, tell me that it's something to do with a Pfizer and its position. Can't miss, but if I do this. And I say, honey, what's the DC6 underscore 447 underscore object? I, I can't comprehend why this would... Why you would want to do this? And if you're watching, you're like, Dave, you're completely wrong. This is the reason. Please let me know because I'd love to learn from it. And there is a, there is a chance that I'm wrong, but I would... I'd, my counter argument would be why do all the other planes all these variables they even though what is it crj crj airsoft another quite a large developer like i'm pretty sure that if you're into these aircrafts and um you look up or if you look up these terms what they might mean you get a pretty good indication of what they do and even if you don't the ones that you probably want to use, because if I don't know what it is, why the in-laws name would I want to use it? But 
you know, I can still see the other ones. Throttle 2, position, okay. Obvious, ecam, audio. Now, perhaps I've rendered a little bit too much of this, but third party developers out there, please listen to me. Stop doing this. Don't. PMDG, if you bring out your 737 and it has the same variables, I'm gonna drag your variable naming through the mod and I'm gonna keep doing it until you learn something because this no please this would take all the fun out of creating hardware for this thing you're gonna spend days just finding out what each thing does you're gonna have to look at the cockpit see what data changes oh but enough about this i want to thank all of you for watching it feels like kind of a milestone 1.0 um, it isn't really a big deal, but for me, eh, I'm happy. So, thank you all for sticking out. Thanks for watching. Special, special thanks to my Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. And I most importantly hope to see you in the next one.